Hi, I'm Joe Couteau from the Ontario Association of Chiefs of Police, and I'm here with my friend Diana Trefkoff, who's released a fabulous new book called Faceless, Voiceless. And uh, Diana, I wanted to, first of all, congratulate you on this uh, new book. I know you've been working at it for two and a half years. Yes, yeah. Tell us about that whole process and how this came about. Um, first of all, I poured my whole soul into it. My heart and soul is in that book. Two and a half years, um, every day. Every day I've been working on it, and it's to honor the victims. And it's actually, it's a little bit inspirational, a little bit true crime, and a little bit police textbook. So it's all in one. And um, I have an American publisher, and it's my biggest dream is to help solve some of the cases that are unsolved in this book. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that you're very much all about the victim. Yeah. And um, this must be something that's very uh, close to your heart. I mean, this is a, it's almost like a tribute to all those people yes. that, and families yes. that you yeah. tried to help in the past. Yeah. Um, Faceless Voiceless, it's putting a face to the unidentified and um, giving them a voice because they can't talk. So some of them were murdered, and I have the families writing about what the victim was like before they got murdered, and I help solve the case. And when I say help, I never do it alone. We work mm -hmm. as a team. So um, it's sad. And then the missing people, I'm still very close with the families, and we're just searching like crazy to find out where they are because they're not. There's 109,000 missing people in Canada and the U.S. Mm -hmm. through the FBI National Crime Information Center, and there's 40 to 60,000 unidentified remains. So it's huge, and this is just such a small part. But I feel like if it can help solve one case, then it's it's done its purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, Diana, how did you get involved, in, or you know, become interested in doing what you do? Because you're very much a specialist. Yeah, um, my passion. You follow your heart. Life's too short, and um, as long as you do something you love, and I love it. It never feels like work. It never feels like work. I care about people. I used to work at York Regional Police in the mm -hmm. forensic identification unit, um, trying to please auxiliary officer also, and I love to help, and I love the whole. Anything that's to do with forensic identification. Mm -hmm. So it's just my passion and helping people. Um, if I have a case to do, I don't care if I eat or sleep from beginning to end, I'll just do it. And I help the families any way I can. I'll reach out to the media, Canada and Nancy Grace, um, all the newspapers. I'll have press conferences at my house, anything to help solve a case. Mm -hmm. Because the families really, they don't know what to do and they're stuck. And they put a lot of pressure on the police, and the police can only do so much, so we all have to work together as a team. Hmm. Uh, tell us about maybe uh, one of your cases that's really stuck with you. Okay, that's um, the Melinda Harder case. She was murdered 28 years ago, mm -hmm. a mother of three, and she went out one night. She never came back. She had three children, three, four, five years old, and um, I did an age progression mm -hmm. on her in, for the Q Center of Missing Persons in North Carolina. And so I age progression Melinda Harder, what she would look like at 45. They put the drawing out all through the states. Um, a homicide investigator with the St. Petersburg Police went to the gas station, seen the missing persons poster mm -hmm. on the wall, recognized the jawline from my age progression, went back to the office, called the FBI, and said, I have a feeling that's our unidentified Jane Doe from 1989. Mm -hmm. And um, it ended up, it took a year, they got the DNA from the skull, the DNA from the family, and it was a match. And I ended up getting the email from the daughter, who was now like 33, and she just said, I just wanted to say um, thank you so much. We're all in shock what happened to my mom. The DNA came back and it was a match. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to thank you for the wonderful things that you do. And I cried. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up, we became very close. And I flew to Florida for the funeral. And I helped them and I cooked spaghetti for 200 people coming back <laughs> from the funeral. And the most, I, and this is the most touching case in, in my heart. They're all special, mm -hmm. but there's, I guess when you stay with the family, when I stayed at Melinda Harder's mom's house, um, the house Melinda grew up in, mm -hmm. they had a special room for me, and I slept better in that room, in that house, than I do in my own house. Mm -hmm. And it was, and I actually carried her remains back into the house that she grew up in. Mm -hmm. So it was very, and to this day, we're like this. Mm -hmm. we, we write, we phone, I let her know the books out, they went out to get copies in Florida. It's just um, the people you meet, when you help them on this level, they're, they're so special that they always, it's a friendship that lasts a lifetime, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm grateful. Well, and you must also make uh, a lot of friends within the police community because you yeah. work very closely yes. with police. Tell yeah. us about that. Um, whether it's in Toronto or Durham Regional Police, I just did human remains. I have to do mm -hmm. a facial reconstruction. Yeah, I respect them all. We work good together. 
I like it because they have, they've always treated me like equal. I've mm -hmm. never felt lower or anything. They always treated me equal. They'd ask for my help, and we get together and we just go and do as much as we can. At the Blue Line trade show, mm -hmm. I had the booth there with the Durham Regional Police case out there. You know, and you have been publishing articles mm -hmm. on cases I've done. So I think it's totally. yeah, I think it's great. You know, the Ontario Chief of Police has always been really great, and we're proud to be part of that association. Well, and we're happy that you're a member of the OACP, a very proud member, and I know that, uh, Diana, you um, you really uh, treasure the relationships that yes. you have within policing, and it's allowed you to, to get to a point where you can now yes. put out this resource. Now, this is really uh, not just a book of um, what you have done, but it's also a resource book yes. for police, and, yeah. and, and people are interested in, in what you do. Yes. Um, it's basically, I have on the special notes at the back, how to do a facial reconstruction from unidentified skull. So I show step by step. Mm -hmm. I have different parts of what is forensic art, all about the training, um, because nobody does it overnight. I have 76 certificates, the only certified forensic art artist in Ontario. Um, there's true crime stories in there. There's inspiration in there. Julian Fantino endorsed my book. He's mm -hmm. always believed it in me. Mm -hmm. um, Nancy Grace's producer, endorsed it also, and Susie Dot, who's the medical examiner in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, the, what you do is, um, it's reflected on TV shows quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, since I've known you, and it's given me an appreciation when I'm watching on TV, the very popular police shows, um, it's not all that Hollywood portrays it as. No. A, lot, a lot of it is long hours, yes. hard work. Yes. Um, is that frustrating sometimes? When you see on TV they've solved the crime using some of your skills yeah. in 40 minutes. I don't watch it. Yeah. <laughs> my dad told me, Diane, quick, put on bones. It's what mm -hmm. you do. I put it on within three seconds. I turned it off. I'm like, Dad, please. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I'm not in, I know it's Hollywood and it's just entertainment, right. but because I'm so deeply into this and this is 100% my passion, um, no, I don't watch that. I love History Channel, mm -hmm. you know, anything that's true, you mm -hmm. know, but um, I, I don't know what to say. It's, 308 pages and it's and it's also used as an investigative book that if you recognize anyone I have a place that you put tips at the back mm -hmm. of the book so it's a, like a bit of a workbook a bit of it's everything and the, the most important thing is it is to honor the victims um, Connie Phillipson actually is the one who originally gave me the name for the book because she says it faceless voices you help give the unidentified a face and you help give them a voice mm -hmm. So um, tell us then, if, if people uh, who see this and uh, are interested in your book, I mean, is it available uh, in Canada? It's available at the moment, 20,000 online bookstores, okay. um, Amazon.ca, Amazon.com, Chapters, um, Barnes & Noble, Borders, and I'm going to be doing some book signing in Chapters in the future. Great. Um, so right now it's online everywhere, and then eventually it's going to come to all the stores too. Great. Well, for everyone who's watching this, I highly recommend Diana's new book. I hope it's the first of many for you. Yes. Uh, I know that you're going to continue to uh, assist police in, in the work that we do. Definitely. Uh, and this is a great example of uh, an expert working with police to keep communities safer and especially to serve the victims yes. in this case. So, Dan, I want to th thank you and congratulations thank on you the book. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I highly recommend that you get out and get these before they all run out. Thank you, Joe. <laughs>